much for joining me. Today's practice is a yin practice with a focus on the shoulders. You will need a bolster and also a blanket and a couple blocks too, just in case. If you don't have a bolster, you can use a cushion, a pillow. You can also roll up the yoga mat that you're on and wrap it with a blanket or a towel. Let's get started. All right, so the focus of our practice, our yin practice is uh, how to open up our shoulders and rejuvenate the shoulders and the chest, upper back area. So with that being said, um, let's actually come into our seated meditation to start. So I like to open a yin practice with meditation, a little bit of breath work, and then we'll move into the asana and the practice. Hopefully if there's time at the end of class, then we will do another deep relaxation meditation. All right, so find a comfortable seat. You can be sitting on maybe your cushion or a block. So something that will let your hips relax. So the hips relax, knees will be below the hips. And we have a sense of buoyancy through the spine. So not over propping and sitting up tall and not it's like slouching into your low back. So just fine. Maybe it might even take a few pelvic rocks or you're just rocking forward and back until you find that nice sweet spot for your spine to be buoyant. Your hands will rest where they instinctively wanna fall. Close the eyes down. And without actually changing or manipulating your breathing, just find a nice connection or a watchful eye of your breath. Feel if there is a sense of texture, a velvety smoothness to the breath. And the weight of your elbows fall heavy towards the earth. And you can feel the areas that are, or the surface of the skin that's connecting with your seat or your mat, your cushion. And you can feel that contact. Belly is soft. The bottom teeth are relaxing from the top teeth. And start to breathe into your, into your body. It's like a nice, slow invitation, welcoming the breath in a way that the inhale is a count of three and the exhale is a count of three. So no sound, no jai breathing yet, just welcoming the length of the inhale and the length of the exhale. You can feel various parts of your body expanding and softening. And though we did add length to the breath, we actually didn't change the sound of our breathing. And so this breath, you can practice this at any time. You can practice this off the mat. You can practice it while you're walking. 
Let's extend the breath now, inhaling and exhaling for a count of four or five, and exhaling for a count of four or five. Start to blink your eyes open very slowly, nice and slow. All right, good morning. Roll your shoulders out. I'm just gonna turn so that you can see my profile in this position. Change the cross of your legs if you're sitting cross-legged. So the other foot comes in front. And let's bring the hands in front of your chest. Take a breath in. Exhale to interlace your fingers. Press your palms towards the mat. Now tuck your chin in towards the chest. Inhale, bring the arms forward. Eyes will follow the knuckles. Inhale to come all the way up to the top. Now open your mouth wide. Exhale out your mouth. Follow your thumbs with your eyes. Interlace the fingers, press all the way down. Good, inhale, arms come forward and up. Feel the breath move into the space between your ribs. Pause at the top. Flip your palms, exhale out your mouth. It almost feels like you're fogging a mirror with your breath. As you exhale, pull your navel in. Inhale, arms come forward and up. We'll do about two more rounds. And you might even feel the shoulders come up a little. That's okay, just try not to overdo it. So there's that nice, happy medium. Exhale. Last one. Inhale, reach forward. And exhale. All right, let it go. Shake out your arms. Shake out the shoulders. A couple rolls. You can even roll out your wrists. Now we're gonna come back into that interlace. So whatever grip you just took, change it. If you don't remember what grip it was, that's okay. It's probably the one that's more uncomfortable. So just take the more uncomfortable interlock. Now we're gonna take the palms, press the hands forward, big breath in. And as you exhale, press the shoulders back, chin to chest. So we're doing something called a shoulder protraction where the shoulder blade is wrapping around the rib cage. Okay. Inhale, arms up. And exhale forward, round the back. Good, again, inhale up. And exhale forward. Round the back, tuck the chin in, really press through the upper back, the shoulder blades, and then shaky, shaky. Okay, let's make our way into tabletop position. Hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips. The blanket is, is no, not there for any particular reason, but we wanna have it close by. Take a breath in, drop your belly, look up to the ceiling. Exhale, round through the spine, chin to chest, press up between your shoulder blades. Inhale, drop your belly, look up. And exhale to round through. Pause here, hold. Tuck the chin in. Okay. All right, big breath in one more time. 
Exhale, round through. Yeah. Now inhale, drop the belly, look up. Let's hold our cow stretch. Look up, open the chest. Feel the sternum, which is the bony part of your chest. Feel it pressing forward away from you. And release down. Couple spinal rolls. And then the other way. All right, so let's make our way into our first shoulder opener. And this is uh, the, I like to call it Cleopatra. <laughs> I know it's not really the name, but um, this pose is gonna help to open the space in the shoulder line of the body. So you're gonna take your block, put it on the lowest height. Now you can either keep working with just the block and support yourself as you come down over it, or you can pat it and put your blanket over it as well. So just find that comfortable spot here. Now we're gonna be here for a while, so we wanna be able to relax into it. Now you can even grab your second block and place your head on the other block so that you have some space to ease down. So what we're doing is we're creating space in the rib cage but you have to really give yourself permission to ease into the shape. You can also take the upper arm up and over. Work with whatever height feels good for you. Now find some movement in your breath. And it helps to close your eyes as well. So you can close the eyes. We do want to have a little bit of a curve. You can even bring the upper arm over. So if you are familiar with this pose, if I were standing, we'd be in a crescent moon shape. So the, let's see if you can land into that and then soften. Nice full breaths. Now it might actually be helpful to come into a three-part breathing. I'm just gonna fix the microphone here. A three-part breathing process where we inhale for a count of three and we exhale for a count of three. I hope that sounds better. Yeah. So inhale for three and exhale for three. more than halfway through the pose. Now, it's so interesting to observe what's been happening um, with our physical, with our bodies. So not to mention, not to mention like what's happening outside in the world because there is a lot of change happening. But what's going on with how our body is internalizing this new change. So we're not, maybe we're not as active as we were before. Like if you were to work in an office building, you might walk to the washroom a few times, far from your desk. Or maybe there is a commute to work where you would walk several, you know, a few, at least 100 feet from the bus stop or your car to your desk. Those little things, they're, they're changing. So perhaps we're not as active as we were and the body tends to tense up 
even more. Last three breaths. Exaggerate your breath now into the left rib cage. All right, now let's actually do the entire practice on the, yeah, no, never mind. We'll come right into the other side. I was gonna suggest to do one side the whole time. So let's just switch over. You can simply roll over if you want, or I'm just gonna change my position for, for the uh, video. So my block is resting like this because that's what fits comfortably on my ribs. You can also turn it laterally if you're taller or longer in the torso. So work with what feels good in your body. I'm gonna pad this so I have a little bit of ease on the, the sharp corners. And I'm gonna come down. Play with the position first. So maybe you don't need that block on the second side and you could use your hand instead. Or maybe you need the height of the hand and then work your way into that movement. So just feeling it out. Notice how that feels. Play with the shape, play with the position. Now the top arm, you could just see like, what position does this feel like in my top arm? Can we bring it over the head? Nice full breaths. In the style of yin, there's more space for silence, which can be quite challenging for those who are more used to a yang style practice where there's consistent direction or a lot of talking. See if you can be okay in that silence. See how you react to it. It can be like when you're in a conversation with somebody and then there's that awkward silence. Maybe it's like a first date or something. <laughs> and then there's that, oh, so how about the weather? Don't go to the how about the weather, just stay in silence and see how that feels. It's interesting to feel how the breath will change in your ribs as well. So as you're in this position, the ribs are a huge component to our capacity to breathe and our deepest inhalation. So because one side is feeling more compressed, what is that doing to the top ribs? What is that doing to where the diaphragm dissects the torso? So the diaphragm is running this way on the body. So what's happening there? Can you explore that? Can you feel more space? Last minute, so that's about five to 10 more breaths.
get a big breath in and breath out. All right, carefully press yourself up. Take the time to crawl right up. And we'll move the blocks and the bolsters out of the way just for a moment. Come onto your back, take a moment in resting pose. So resting pose, you lay back, feet mat with distance apart, let the knees knock together, and just lay down. Maybe you can feel your breath. How does it feel to get into that breathing? Maybe you feel taller, longer on the sides. So there's also, uh, depending on how you were stretching, we did open up quite a bit on the sides of the body. So um, all the muscles, the obliques, they're, they're quite engaged or they were stimulated as well. So between the poses, there's a rebound or a moment for us to just reconnect with our breath. Sometimes it's a little bit of yang movement. Sometimes it's just this reconnection with the earth. All right, so let's get set up for a uh, supported fish. So we're gonna come into a supported fish shape. Now one block will come between the shoulders uh, you could also use your bolster as well. So one will come here and the other will come behind the head. So if I were looking down on my mat, it will form the shape of a T. So one like this and one like this. Now, if you want to use the bolster, which might actually be more comfortable for you in this position, so we'll take the bolster and bring it right into supporting the back of the ribs. So not underneath the lumbar spine, but the back of the ribs. The legs will come all the way out into Shavasana legs. And we need the legs to be wide today. So if you're used to coming into Baddha Konasana with the soles of your feet together and knees open, we're gonna keep the legs straight because we need them to, to anchor our balance when we get into some movement. All right, so I'm also gonna change the position of my neck because I can feel a little bit of discomfort there. If you want the head to be higher and you're on a bolster, slide a block underneath the bolster where your head would rest and we'll move from there. All right, so come into your supported fish. Now, in light of this being a shoulder practice, let's just do a few arm circles, timing the breath and movement. So start with, let's take your thumbs, curl your hands so the thumbs are pointing up. Take a full breath in. Exhale to contract your belly. Inhale, bring your arms all the way up. Over your head, they might even pass your ears. Try not to let the ribs flare open. Now bend your elbows, cactus the arms come into a full circle, a big circle, hands by the thighs, thumbs up, inhale back up, all the way up and back. If you can, try to stretch that exhale, that inhale, sorry. Open the arms to cactus, drag it down your back. Thumbs up, inhale. Exhale. Okay, do this. Let's just do one more. Then we'll have to change the direction. All right, so change the direction. So this time take the arms, thumbs point away from you, away from the thighs, and then out. Ooh. Open the chest. Now exhale to bring the arms up. Inhale. 
Inhale out to the sides. Exhale, back up. Take two more full circles at your own pace. Let the chest open. Nice full breath, so the exhales to bring the hands towards the thighs. Inhale, big, broad breath across the chest. Exhale. Now let the palms land, back of the hands rest on the mat, and just let the shoulders drop over your support. Now if you'd like to take Baddha you could slide the feet in and the knees will drop open. You can also use your blanket or your blocks to wedge underneath the knees. So I'm gonna, if I needed it, I'd place it there so that my hips are supported. That was just my, my blanket rolled up. And I'm just placing it right there. into your breath. Feel your entire body expanding. the fingers relax, the back of the hands resting on the earth, and there's a weight of gravity pulling you all the way down to the floor, just like a blanket pulling you down, or a weighted blanket on all the contact points of your body. So what's interesting to feel is there are two positions in the body where you can always tell if somebody has been sitting for a really long time and looking at a computer. It's called a, the upper cross syndrome and then there's the lower cross syndrome. So upper cross syndrome, imagine there's a line that's dropped from the crown of your head all the way down your spine. So sometimes um, when we have perfect posture, everything lines up. So the ears line up with the shoulders, the hips, and all the way down to the heels. But when we have poor posture or when we've been sitting for a long time, the shoulders start to round forward. Now that creates a tightening across your chest. So what happens to those muscles? Those muscles become um, short and tight, where the upper back becomes really weak and wide. So this that sensation of the shoulders rounding forward is, is an issue, but then what translates up higher is that 
we try to recompensate that line, that pin, that line that's dropped down from the crown of the head by tilting the chin up. Maybe it's to look at your screen. So we're, we're rebalancing the body to find that position. So as we travel up the spine towards the skull, the back of the neck is tight, but the front of the throat is coming forward or it's longer and the chin pokes forward. You can almost visualize that. So chin forward, back rounding. That's a very common posture that you see in a lot of bodies. So this pose here, supported fish, is such a great way to correct it. Now bring your hands to the outside of your knees. Bring the knees back up to center. So even if the legs were extended, knees come up. Big breath in and a breath out. Again, breathe in and breathe out. Roll off the side of your blocks or your cushion. Just hang out on your side with the arm as a pillow. Now help yourself up. Let's move everything out of the way here. So the blankets, you will need your two blocks for the next shape. You might find that the, bolt, the blocks are more supportive than a bolster in this position. So bring yourself into a tabletop position and the hands where the hands have landed, place the blocks exactly where the hands are. And it turned this way, so it might have better light for that. All right, so the hands, they go where the blocks, or the blocks go where the hands are. Now lower yourself down onto your elbows on the blocks. Now you can keep the form separated, or you could interlace your fingers. Walk your knees back, walk them back, and then pull your hips all the way back so that the hips are high over the knees. You need, might need to reposition. Now, if this is a little bit hard for the elbows, like those little, this part here, you can use the bolster instead. As we take a deep breath in, fill your entire chest. Now exhale, let the heart drop. Now, as I'm bending the elbows, the hands might come back up behind the head. You might even bring your hands behind uh, the shoulder blades. You can even take a more like a prayer hand position. Let the chest and the heart melt towards the mat. Only come to a point of sensation. Now, if this is a lot for you, then back off. You could do child's pose instead. So child's pose looks like this. So child's pose is this shape. Still gonna get the same benefits of opening up into the shoulder girdle without the deeper stretch into uh, as puppy. So. Yogi's choice, go ahead, play with that position, whatever works for you. And if the arms are starting to chicken wing out to the side, See if you need to come back up and reposition the blocks. Try to keep the elbows in like a chaturanga shape almost. So elbows pointing away from the shoulders, triceps facing down. Now, if you can't see this in the video, um, my forehead is very close to the floor. And in fact, it might even touch the floor on my mat. 
but you can also have the head floating. That's that works too. Feel the breath spread across the upper back, maybe into the bra line area. About another minute, so that's five to ten breaths. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can count them out. Now let the hands come back to the mat. Slowly, slowly, slowly press yourself back up. Ooh. Oh, hey, shoulders. Good morning. <laughs> Let's just sit back here. Shake out the arms. Big, big shoulder rolls. So just pause for a moment. <sighs> All right, so the next movement will be coming into, you will need your blanket. So fold your blanket in half and then in half. Uh, we wanna have a nice thick blanket so that you have at least two inches of padding. Um, now this is also the length of your torso from your underarm to your pubic bone area. So we're gonna be laying down on our, on our chest. Grab one of your blocks too, as you'll need that readily accessible. So as you lay down, we come down onto the blanket. Line it up so that it's in line with your armpit. And we'll take the left arm down and the right arm will cross over top. The head will come forward. So work with whatever height feels good for you. If it actually feels better to come up onto a block and pad the block, you could do that. You can also do this with a bolster across your chest. So that does feel pretty good as well. So if you're using the bolster, you'll take the bolster and slide it right underneath you, like so, and come forward. Now, the higher you go, the more com the, the least stretch. So if you find it flat on your chest and uncomfortable, then laying on a higher elevation will actually feel better for your chest. So work with what feels good for you. And we'll settle right in, right arm on top. Right arm on top. And as we get into the shape, notice how this feels to flip the palms up, flip them down and up. Maybe you can even line the elbows up in alignment with each other. Now start to breathe into your back. And you can feel the entire back expanding on the inhale and softening on the exhale. Let the tummy be soft. Jaw is relaxed.
Now, you might notice this is uncomfortable for the feet. With the toe, tops of the feet on the mat, you can always do this with the toes curled under. Just find a shape where your ankles can be relaxed. Breathe into the space right underneath your shoulder blade. And it might actually feel harder to breathe in this shape. So see if you can exaggerate the breath all the way down into your spine, into your hips. Five more breaths. Take them nice and slow. Inhaling for a count of three and exhaling for a count of five or six. slowly. Mm. Hands come underneath your shoulders, activate your core muscles, and push back. Take a moment in child's pose. Switch up. This time with the hands beside your feet. Crawl your way up, big shoulder roll. Interlace your hands behind you, take a breath in. Now puff your chest up to the ceiling, open up across the heart. Take a pause. Okay, other side. So we had the right arm on top last time. This time it's the left arm on top. So come forward, bring the right arm down, left arm to cross over. See if you can decompress your ear, your shoulders away from your ears. So pull the shoulders down, away from the ears. Breathe very deep. And just know that your breath is there to support you. Listen to the sound of your breathing. Hear it wash the back of your throat. The inhale and the exhale at a one to two ratio. So the inhale is a count of three and the exhale is a count of six now. Just a couple more minutes in the shape. Well, anywhere from 10 to 12 breaths. 
It's a very wide window because we all have such a different lung capacity. Last five breaths. Just finishing off the last two breaths. Embellish them into your spine, into the upper back. Hands come underneath you, push back, child's pose. your back. Move all the, move the blanket and the blocks out of the way. And we'll make our way into final twist. Won't be there for too long. So knees can come into your chest. And let the knees fall to the right. Might even feel like the shoulder can come closer to the floor now. Let's just take the right hand into the left thigh bone and roll the thigh away from the hip. So we're taking that thigh bone and rolling it away from your body. back up to center and switch sides. Left hand onto the right thigh bone, pull it away from you like you're kneading dough. onto your back and into Shavasana. Stretch your legs all the way out. Tuck your shoulder blades underneath you and let the weight of your body relax onto the mat. the eyes aren't already closed, close the eyes down and feel your eyes drop into the back of your head. So heavy are the eyelids. The weight of your heels on the mat. The weight of your legs, your hips sinking. Your spine so heavy and the shoulder blades heavy. Let your hands 
hands and your arms drop into the earth. You are exactly where you're meant to be. no rush. If you have time to rest in Shavasana longer, I encourage you to stay there and enjoy. From my heart to yours, namaste.